Hey everybody, this is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner, and today I'm going to talk about a subject that should be very helpful for a lot of you, which is how do you model cabin gain? Now cabin gain can be either cabin gain in your car audio system, or it can be room gain from your home theater or your living room setup. I've seen this question come up a few times, and people want to understand how is it that you can get an idea or an approximation for what the subwoofer is going to perform like in your home because we know that once you put a subwoofer into a room there's going to be a lot of different effects there's going to be modal peaks and dips but there's also going to be some room gain itself and in this video i'm going to provide you with a very simple and free way to approximate the room gain itself First off, what is room gain or cabin gain? Well, that's the point at which the wavelengths are so long relative to the dimensions of the room that you're in that they aren't allowed to really travel in place. They don't reflect, they don't bounce around as much as they do just stand still. Think of it like if you put a large ball into a small square, you're gonna cram that large ball in there. It's not gonna have a lot of room to go around anywhere. But if you have a whole bunch of ping pong balls in a smaller square, about the same size, those ping pong balls are free to travel around. You can visualize that like sound particles. So naturally, as you can imagine, if you put a whole bunch of sound energy into a smaller cabin, then that means that the frequency that the sound is gonna be allowed to move in is gonna be shifted higher, as opposed to if you put that sound energy into a larger cabin, then that frequency that the sound energy is gonna be allowed to bounce around within is gonna move lower in frequency. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, I'm gonna do probably one of the dumbest things that you might ever see me do. And it's not because of how silly the example I'm gonna give you is, but because of how much I am risking my life, I am gonna use my wife's glassware and I'm gonna use some rocks and I'm gonna to try to give you an example of what I mean. So first of all, we're gonna pretend like we have a really high frequency relative to sub bass. We're gonna say a thousand Hertz. I'm gonna use this and this is gonna be my room, okay? And I'm using clear because I wanna give you an idea. So bear with me while I pour this out. Oh yeah, this is a whole bunch of rocks. These are my kid's rocks. I don't know, she loves collecting rocks. I may have to go get her. Oh, okay, I figured this out. All right, I'm gonna pour a whole bunch of thousand hertz. into this and you can see that within this room, the frequency is allowed to travel all over the place. It can go up and down and side to side. It can go up and down and side to side. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the gist of high frequencies. In a room, they're able to pretty much go wherever they want, assuming they aren't absorbed by something else. Now, I'm going to give an example of something a little bit lower in frequency. I'm going to call each of these larger suckers 200 hertz. Okay? Let's take 200 hertz, put it into the room. And you can't really fill this up with 200 hertz or with the same number of rocks that I had before, but we're going to pretend like it's the same number they're able to move around, they're able to do back and forth a little bit, but there's not as much freedom for each of these to move around, okay? Let's pretend like we have a wavelength of 20 hertz. And I need the same number as I had before of each of those, but I'm not gonna be able to do that with this example. So we're gonna pretend like all we can fit in this room is this much of 20 hertz. It can't go anywhere in this room, it's stuck, okay? So what that really means is that this wavelength isn't bouncing around side to side and up and down between the walls. It's right there in the room. It's stagnant. It's going one way and back and that's it. It's not going all over the place tangentially. It's just going a few different directions and that's pretty much it. Now that's a layman's version and certainly probably not the best version of providing an example of room gain or cabin gain um, on the internet. <laughs> But I'm from Alabama. I'm doing the best I can with what I've got. Hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of what happens when you trap volume into a room. There's only certain particles that can be excited enough to freely move around while low frequency particles aren't free to move. You can actually calculate 
the point and frequency where that effect takes over pretty easily. And that's just simply taking the longest dimension of the room and multiplying it by two. Knowing this, we can use a program called WinISD and essentially get a good model for where the frequency of cabin gain is gonna take over and what that is gonna to do to the subwoofer response or in car audio, even the mid bass response. And this knowledge allows you to not necessarily just understand what's gonna happen, but also to help you better choose a speaker within your budget or a speaker within your means. And by that, what I mean simply is, let's say that you are gonna build a car audio system and you want a subwoofer that rocks. Naturally, you're gonna think bigger is better, but you don't have either enough space and or enough budget to allow you to get a big old honking 15 inch subwoofer in your car. So what do you do? Well, you start panicking. You start thinking, I gotta find something that's large and work. Well, a lot of the times for most people, a good 10 inch subwoofer is really all you need. Why is that? Cabin gain. Same thing for home audio. You'll see a subwoofer that my test may show it rolls off at 40 hertz. But thanks to cabin gain, if you've got a smaller room, you may pick up some extra energy below 40 hertz. Now in a larger room, you may not pick up extra energy until 30, maybe even 20 hertz. Uh, and you could even be lower if it's a much, much larger room. But with this information in mind, you can again calculate and get a good idea of what the cabin gain or room gain is gonna to do to the response. And you can model the subwoofer along with that cabin gain or room gain in a room and get an idea of what it is that you're gonna need for your own situation. This is especially helpful for somebody who's on a budget that, like I mentioned, you may feel the need to spend more money to go get something super extra duper, but you may not actually need it, especially when you're just starting off. With this in mind, let's jump forward and look at WinISD and look at how you can model this effect in a room or for a car stereo and help you determine the best apples to apples comparisons when you're shopping a subwoofer purchase. Now, before I jump into this, I wanna say a couple things first. Number one is this, again, is an approximation. This isn't supposed to be the de facto, absolutely without a shadow of a doubt, this is how it's gonna behave in your room or your car. That's just no real way to do that without you taking some empirical data yourself, i.e. taking a subwoofer out into a field, measuring it free field, and then putting it in the listening location. Otherwise, we're doing the best we can with models. Secondary is the plus 12 dB per octave cabin gain that you get is an approximation as well. I've seen numbers from nine to 10 dB uh, increase in response as you go lower in frequency per octave. Uh, but generally the plus 12 dB seems to be accepted. And in my experience, while these models are just models, they are pretty good at giving you a good approximation. The benefit here really is when it comes to trying to decide which subwoofer is the best subwoofer to buy, uh, which enclosure is gonna work best for me, those kind of things. And this gives you a good, more real world apples to apples comparison between your choices, as opposed to modeling a subwoofer, seeing it being down 15 dB at 30 Hertz, and then thinking to yourself, oh, well, now I gotta go spend another two or $300 to get better performance there. In reality, you may not need that better performance for your particular case. Some might want more output on the low end, and if you're one of those people, that's great, I know I do, but others who, especially those who are just starting out, are gonna be limited by budget, and they may be okay with you know, a more linear response down to 20 hertz instead of it being <clears throat> plus 20 dB or plus 15 dB or whatever uh, that goes along with their house curve that they may want to use being flat at 20 Hertz may be okay for you. And that's what I'm here for. That's what this tutorial is for, is to help you out, to give you better understanding of what happens when you put the speaker into a room. And that notwithstanding, you're definitely gonna have dips and peaks from the room itself, um, from cancellation and uh, gain. Alrighty, first things first, we are on the WinISD website. You can go to their page and you can download the latest version of WinISD software, it is completely free. Once you do that, you'll have to set it up, uh, install it and all that stuff. And if you wanna learn about how to use it in more detail than I'm about to show you, because this really isn't a WinISD tutorial, it's just a how to approximate cabin gain tutorial, you can Google that. There's tons of information out there. 
and you'll find all the help you need through other means. I want to go ahead and get kicked off. So let's look at this. Now we're going to have a couple different situations. First situation, we're going to say we've got a car system. We want to put a 10 inch subwoofer in and we want to figure out where cabin gain is. Well, cabin gain for a car can be anywhere typically from 60 to 80 Hertz. And again, you can determine where cabin gain starts at in your car from either empirical data, which is taking a subwoofer out in a field, testing it, put it in your car and figuring it out that way. Or you can just approximate it by figuring out the longest distance of your car and then multiplying that by two and then converting that to frequency. And the way that you do that is to say, let's take a car, let's say it's eight foot long from front to back. That's gonna be the longest dimension because the width of it may be six feet wide, okay? So we're gonna take eight feet, we're gonna multiply it by two, and that's 16 feet. Now, speed of sound moves at about 1125 feet per second. So we need to take speed of sound, 1125 feet per second, divide it by the 16 feet, and we get a roughly 70 hertz. So we're gonna say that 70 hertz for our car is where cabin gain takes over. Now we'll use that information going forward. Within WinISD, I'm gonna bring up a subwoofer. I'm gonna just grab a random one. Uh, this one is a, a Dire Audio. I'm gonna say, let's just model a 10 inch subwoofer, okay? And I'm gonna just do one. It's recommending a vented enclosure. I'm gonna do sealed to make life easy for me. And I'm gonna go with their recommendation for the enclosure size. And I'm gonna call this our baseline without cabin gain, all right? And now we have our response without cabin gain for this particular subwoofer and this particular enclosure size. Not really paying attention to that information right now because that's not what we're worried about. Now I'm gonna take a separate version. I'm going to copy this and the copy, I'm going to do something different. I'm gonna go ahead, first of all, I'm gonna color it red. And what you wanna do, and this is the key part, is you're gonna go down to filters, click that filters button, then click add. When the add button comes up or window comes up, what we're gonna to do to model cabin gain is we're going to hit link width transform. And right here, FO is gonna be where your cabin gain starts. Now, we had just taken our calculations and determined that cabin gain for our vehicle that is approximately eight feet longest length is about 70 Hertz. So that's what we're gonna do. Now for Q0, we're gonna take that and change it to 0 0.707 to give us the proper slope for response. And on FP, which is basically your minimum frequency that you want to extend this cabinet gain down to, we're gonna change it from 20 and I'm just gonna make it say one. And then I'm going to hit add. And when I did that, what you should have seen is the red line pop up. And now with the red line, that's, well, of course I named these backwards, so go figure, right? Uh, the red line now is our cabin gain version and the blue line is our without cabin gain version. And what you can see right away is a drastic, drastic difference between the two response. So let's first of all go and look at 50 hertz. So on the blue without cabin gain version, 50 hertz is about 4 dB down in response. But on the red version with cabin gain, 50 hertz is about was about about plus three db in response so you've got a plus seven db gain from cabin gain at 50 hertz and then if you want to go down and look at 20 hertz you can see that we're about plus four db at 20 hertz with cabin gain and without cabin gain you're at about minus 18 or so that's a big gain that's about 22 db in gain due to cabin gain that's a big deal. Now let's say that you drive a truck, okay? And, and I'm, I'm kind of just making up numbers here, but let's say you got a short cab truck and the longest distance is side to side. So it's the width of a truck. And I'm just gonna say that's about five feet. I'm, I'm not sure, that's about five feet. So we're gonna take uh, five and we're gonna double it to get a, a length and frequency. We get 10 feet, so, okay? So now we're gonna take the speed of sound in feet per second, 1125 and we're going to divide it by 10 feet. And now we've got 112.5. So basically 113 Hertz. Wow, cabin gain went up to 113 Hertz. Now we wanna take that model. We're gonna to go to this link with transform and we're gonna change it to 113. 
Look at that. Look at all that free base you get. I mean, this is going up out of the stratosphere and it's probably gonna plateau around here somewhere. But you can see that it makes a huge, huge difference. Now, what happens if you're in a home? You've got a home theater set up and let's say your room is, I mean, a typical room, let's just say, I don't know, um, 10 by 12, 10 by 12 foot room. So in this case, your shortest or your longest distance is gonna be um, 12 feet. So we're gonna take our calculator again. We're gonna say 12 times two, 24 feet. We're gonna say speed of sound divided by 24 feet is 46, so about 47 hertz. So it makes sense that in a room which is larger than a car, that the cabin gain frequency is gonna move down. So instead of it being 80 or 100 and something hertz, it's gonna be down into about 47 hertz. So what do you do there? Again, you just go to the Linkwitz transform and you just change this FO to 47 hertz. And here you go. And you can see that there's quite a bit of difference between car audio bass and home audio bass. This 10 by 12 foot room has significantly less room gain than the car did, but there's still a good bit of room gain to be provided. And you may say that, hey, in this limited budget that I've got, this is adequate. This is this is okay. I can I can live with that. Or you may not. You may say, whoa, buddy, I need a whole lot more bass than that. And at this point is when you start going around with your model and you start picking other subwoofers and I mean you're free to do whatever you want I'm going to grab a JL 13W7 something just ridiculous right closed okay JL create now look at that JL now I'm going to copy this JL and I'm going to make sure I'm circle on it now I'm going to go with language transform and I'm going to say same room 47 hertz is where your cabin gain or room gain is and I'm going to make this say 0 0.707 and I'm going to go down to one Hertz again and I'm going to hit add and I'm going to change the original to red just to kind of follow the same suit of information and again you can see well actually I'm sorry I'm gonna change the original back to blue and I'm going to change the new one to red all right now you can see the two blues were the same parameters, same room, but different subwoofers. And with this big 13 inch W7, you've got lower FS, uh, you've got more surface area, so you get lower in response even without room gain. But when you factor in the room gain, look at all that extra you get from that output. And you may look at this and say, well, that's too much. Well, great, because a 13W7 isn't cheap. So you could probably go with a 10W7 or a 12W7, or you can go with something entirely different. It doesn't really matter to me what you choose. The point here is you can take this information and use it to provide meaningful knowledge to help you with your purchase decision. And with all of that said, again, the key word that I want you to focus on here is model, and the other one is approximation. These are not going to be the exact response that you get in a room, but this is a really good way of trying to get real world performance out of a free model. So that's gonna be it for me. I hope you guys appreciate it and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I don't know everything there is to know. I know just enough to provide you with the material to be dangerous and that's it. I hope you guys have a good one. Take care, peace.